Y'all, these Instagram brands, these brands, they're shady. I was supposed to film this video at least a week ago, but between the construction noise, which by the way, continues, you're gonna hear it, and Christmas, I just couldn't get to it. But today we're just gonna have to power through the noise because I am troubled by so many of the practices that I see from these Instagram brands. And when I say Instagram brands, I'm referring to brands that more or less emerged through Instagram, whether it's through their actual Instagram account pages, Instagram sponsored posts, AKA ads, or a combination. You know, the brands that we first heard of or became acquainted with through Instagram, and they don't really seem to do any advertising anywhere else for the most part, except maybe Facebook since it's the same company anyway. You know, your Gymsharks, Fabletics, Stronger, based on the psychological profile that they have on me, I get a lot of activewear ads. Fashion Nova also comes to mind, which bitch, bye, I was never buying from them. Getting into the beauty space, I would also consider Pat McGrath Labs, Natasha Denona, Melt, Dose of Colors. I would consider all of these to also be Instagram brands. In my estimation, that is how all of these brands first blew up and it seems to be the primary way for them to communicate with their customers is through Instagram or in the case of Pat McGrath Labs, the way they fail to communicate with their customers. I'll get to that later. Along with that, I'm also going to get into some IG brands that I have purchased from and that I will encourage you to avoid as we go along in the video. But just before we get into everything, I should say just for my own protection that all of this is alleged, even though I dead ass have receipts for some of the things I'm about to say, but you know, better safe than sorry. Suffice to say, Insta scam is one giant ad. That's all it is. So our feeds are really just an endless scroll of people trying to sell us <laughs> via sponsored posts from your favorite influencers or via the traditional ads that are actually made to look like they're just a harmonious part of your feed and could actually be a post from someone you follow. And then of course, every once in a while, you get to see a post from one of your actual friends. Social media and the marketing that goes with it are very much the wild west. I'm sorry, there's a truck backing up. I'm gonna keep going. And it's important for us to be sad about when and which brands are trying to scam us. The short answer, all of them, all of these brands are frauds. Today I wanna to share my theories and experiences after having purchased from a handful of Insta scam brands because the only real options we have are one, to not fall for the <laughs> shit in the first place, or two, to spread the word after we've been duped by these shady brands and hopefully prevent someone else from falling for the same shit in the first place. Facebook and Google have entirely too much data on all of us and it's terrifying. And the fact is when we engage with an ad, we're giving them more of it. When you click on a product in an IG ad to learn more, they're learning more about you. When you like a post that's actually an ad, however it is that you engage with this content, whatever you do, they are tracking and storing all of this. Because even if you don't buy the thing now, the fact that you clicked on it lets them know that it at least tickled your pickle. And they'll know that they can keep harassing you with that same ad, that same image, whatever, to eventually try to sway you into buying that sweater or those boots or those earrings. So let's talk about some red flags once you do make that first mistake of actually clicking on an ad or engaging with it in some other way, rather than just scrolling on by. For one, we're talking about engaging with the ads, right? So let's talk about engagement. Nowadays, Instagram hides the number of likes on a given post, although I can actually personally still see likes as before because I'm super paranoid and I have to manually approve all software updates on my phone. I haven't manually opted into that update yet, so I'm still seeing likes. But most of the rest of y'all can't see likes on posts and that used to be a great way of gauging which brands were probably buying followers. A telltale sign of padding your follower count is disproportionately low engagement on all of your posts. If you have 20,000 followers on your page and you can't even hit 100 likes on a post, something in the milk ain't clean. So although likes are indeed hidden now for most of us, another way to tell if a brand has falsely inflated their follower base is by looking at the comments. Taking that same example of a page that has say 20,000 followers, if they're getting five or 10 comments on a post, they don't really have 20K, it's mostly bots. In my opinion, if you have to lie about how many people are actually following your brand account, then there's no telling what else y'all are lying about. And we don't need to be out here buying from brands that so blatantly play themselves. My next suggestion is to avoid buying from any brands that have nothing but five-star reviews on every product. Now, 
Some of these brands think they slick and they'll let one or two or three four star reviews get past the goalie to make things look a little bit more believable. But it is extremely unlikely that any product on earth is going to have nothing but five star review after five star review after five star review. Least of all, some rando ass brands leggings that you saw on Instagram. A few things are likely happening here. The first being fake reviews, right? Easy answer. Also easy to spot because they're usually like one sentence long, just OMG, I love it five stars. Another telltale sign is when all these rather brief reviews also sound like they were written by someone who isn't a native English speaker because that points to the very high likelihood that they used a review farm overseas. Aside from the fake reviews, another tactic that these Instascam brands love to do is to block any and all real reviews that are below five stars, maybe four stars. I know that brands do this because it has happened to me and one such brand that has blocked reviews that were less than five stars, less than four stars is Namesthetics. And I'm gonna say allegedly, even though, again, I have f***ing receipts. I wrote reviews for Namesthetics on two or technically two and a half separate occasions for two different orders. And uh, obviously, shame on me for even giving them a second chance by ordering a second time. I first purchased these genie pants from them in June. The pants were cute, but they were honestly just okay and far too expensive for the quality of the garment and the material that was used. The sizing makes no sense. The pants stretch out over time as you wear them. And I wrote a three-star review stating all of this. I repeat, I wrote this three-star review that was quite detailed. It took up to four minutes of my time all the way back in June. And now here we are six months later. If you go to that product page today, there are nothing but five and four star reviews, a sprinkling of four star reviews, by the way, maybe three or so, because you know, you want it to be believable. You can't just have the five star reviews if you're really gonna pull this scam off. I can only wonder how many other people wrote reviews that were three, two, one star that never made it to the site. At first, I actually gave them the benefit of the doubt and thought that perhaps the brand liked to review all the reviews and check them uh, manually for sensitive or offensive information that might be contained therein. But here we are some six months later and my review and God knows how many others that other people have left that were not five stars are in the wind. Because I am a damn fool, I ordered from this brand again in their Black Friday Cyber Monday deals, hoping that perhaps the whole review thing was just a glitch, who knows? This time around, one of the items I picked up was their Radiance sports bra. Long story short, the pattern and sizing on this item, just like the pants, makes no sense. It is cut in such a way that unless you have an unusually short sternum and your cup size is A minus, your tits are definitely going to be hanging out the bottom of the bra. It looks pretty normal as I'm holding it up here, I'm sure, but I promise you, the distance from the top of the shoulder to the bottom of the bus, it's just not long enough to cover that much area on the average person because I'm not even busty. It's truly just bizarre. I thought about inserting a clip of me wearing it just to show you guys how much it doesn't fit, but I'm not trying to get demonetized over some underboob cleavage. So this time around, I wrote my review, two stars, more or less knowing that it would never see the light of day. Sure enough, I wrote the review, posted it, and got all the way to the thank you for your feedback, thank you for your review page, whatever it says. The funny thing about this item is, not only did my review get blocked, but no review from anyone has ever posted for this item. Wonder why? Since my hunch was proven right, I decided this time around that before I hit post, why don't I go ahead and copy and paste my little two-star review into another tab just in case I need to post it again and film it, which I did. So let's roll the videotape of my less than favorable review on this item not posting to their site with my email address redacted because of duh. As 
this item has zero reviews, none whatsoever, at least as of yesterday, last time I checked again to make sure. They know it sucks and they want to make sure that as like me can't warn you that it sucks. Another brand that I am alleging does the exact same thing as Namasthetics is Buddha Pants. From Buddha Pants, I purchased a jumpsuit as well as their digital rainbow harem pants, these ones. Again, two star item, far too expensive for the thinness of the material and just the overall quality of the item. I mean, these pants arrived with a hole in the pocket, straight out the pack, they had a hole in the pocket. A hole which I discovered when about half a block into taking my dog for a walk, I felt my keys jiggling around down by my ankle. Good thing there's elastic at the cuff or else my keys might have wound up down a storm drain. If you go to the product page of these pants, they have a nearly perfect five-star rating. And if you sort the reviews to show you the most recent ones, the newest one is from September, which is curious since I wrote my two-star review this month. This time around, I didn't bother like filming myself reposting the review a second time like I did with Namasthetics because I think you guys get the point. You're seeing the trend here that these brands are allegedly doing these shady things of blocking less than favorable reviews. I think we're all starting to see pretty clearly what these brands are up to and baby, I just ain't got the time to be reposting and reposting reviews that aren't even gonna post. But hey, you know, silver lining, at least Buddha Pants did send me this handy 15% off coupon code as a thank you for my review, which they censored because it wasn't favorable. So go ahead and knock yourself out if you wanna try using that code yourself, so long as you don't have a problem buying from brands that lack ethics and transparency. Oh, speaking of a lack of ethics and transparency, let's talk about Pat McGrath Labs. Some of you guys know that I've been dibbling and dabbling in Pat McGrath makeup over the last year, year and a half, and uh, let's be fair, there have been quite a few debacles with the brand this year. It has been quite the sampler platter of snafus from weird rollouts for various palette releases to taking a month or longer to fulfill some of their holiday sale orders if they've been fulfilled at all, to selling people what are essentially glorified eco tools brushes at like a 10X markup. And lest we forget the $60 foundation primer where the label sticker was literally falling off the bottles. To me, this brand has frankly begun to exhibit a pattern of not giving a shit about their customers. Most of these blunders are things that didn't affect me personally because I wasn't even interested in the products or what have you in the first place, but I have so many questions about the way that this brand is moving. The latest thing that has gotten people oh so salty is the rollout of this Star Wars collection and I actually was affected by this. That may be a surprise to my ride or dies because y'all already know that I don't give a single fuck, fuck solo if you will about Star Wars. However, I love purple eyeshadow and I especially love my six pan mini mothership palettes from Pat McGrath. I love it more than the big one that I got, the subversive. I have the three original mini mothership palettes and if I were going to do a 2019 favorites video, which I'm not, platinum bronze and bronze ambition would be in it. So after seeing the colors, I had 100% planned to get both of the two six pan palettes from this Star Wars release. Now, the first one was literally released on Instagram. Like, like I purchased and checked out through Instagram, like through Instagram checkout to buy that thing. So I was able to get one of the two mothership palettes. You know, she takes the vowels out for the six pans, mothership. Okay, okay, let's move on. So I was able to get one of the two Star Wars mothership mini palettes. I just thought that the Instagram launch was a bit weird. I didn't even know there was such a thing as Instagram checkout prior to that. That's probably why they did it, you know, to help raise awareness about this new feature. But it also just seemed a little unfair to me when I thought of her customers who maybe don't have Instagram. Nonetheless, I just wrote it off as some kind of Deal that the brand likely had struck with Instagram to help raise awareness and promote this new feature of Instagram checkout. I figured that they were probably releasing a very limited amount of stock to satisfy this arrangement with, with Instagram that they probably had. And I thought that they would probably just keep the bulk of the stock for the proper release on Pat McGrath's own website. Now I knew as well as anyone else that trying to get anything from this release was going to be a new level of intensity because not only are you dealing with the Pat McGrath and makeup lovers, but you're dealing with Star Wars lovers, many of whom 
are fucking nuts. I imagine that there were probably a whole lot of people trying to buy items from this collection who don't even care about makeup, who probably don't even know who Pat McGrath is, but who just love Star Wars and wanna collect it. Knowing this, I tried signing up again for emails from Pat McGrath. I've tried to do this in the past. I've tried doing it from different email addresses. Nonetheless, and on every attempt, I never get any emails, ever. In anticipation of this Star Wars frenzy, I was just like, you know what? It's time to get this problem sorted out. So I emailed her customer service about the issue on December 3rd, trying to make sure that I would be on the email blast list so I'd be able to get these stupid eyeshadows and not have to worry. And then I got a bot response saying that someone would be in touch with me in 48 to 72 hours. That was December 3rd. I'm still waiting. So I was reliant on their Instagram feed because I knew that this was going to be a cluster bang. And I even turned on notifications for any posts uh, to the Pat McGrath account because like that's how much I wanted to actually be able to buy this palette. So I have my notifications, I'm getting all the Instagram posts and uh, they announce the date and time that this other palette is gonna launch, whatever. And I, being the loser that I am, I actually arranged my schedule so that I would be available and at my computer for the time that they had announced this stuff would launch. Well, the date and time came and there I am at my computer about 10 minutes early and I'm clicking and everything says sold out and I'm just like, they must mean coming soon. But no, the actual launch time came and nothing changed because everything was already gone. Turns out that they had announced on their IG stories or some sh early access some three hours prior. Three hours before the date and time that they had been telling us for the past week or so, they actually launched the products and it completely sold out. Evidently the early access didn't limit stock in any way whatsoever to make sure that there would still be stock available for the real launch time that they had stated previously in, I don't know, several posts. Only the people who somehow magically get these emails that I can't seem to get, or the people who stalk Pat McGrath's Instagram stories knew what the hell had happened. It's only makeup, my life will go on. But my real issue here is just with the utter disregard, the lack of care, the lack of appreciation shown to their customers. I legit rearranged my schedule to buy these stupid eyeshadows, only to have my time wasted. And these behaviors just speak to an attitude that's quite gross to me. It seems like they seem to think they don't need loyal customers to be successful. That they can keep pulling this shit and playing these games and people will still keep dick riding for the brand regardless because it's some great privilege to even have the opportunity to buy their makeup. No one needs to be out here pleading and begging for the opportunity to buy a $130 eyeshadow palette. Get the f out of here. There are plenty of other good brands that don't seem to willfully f people over or make them jump through hoops just to buy their products. It's one thing to believe in your product because you know that it is of quality, but this is just arrogant, disorganized, and unprofessional. Y'all need to get over yourselves. I, for one, have no intentions to purchase from any of these Instascam brands that are engaging and moving in ways like the brands I've discussed today. Anyway, those are just a few practices and brands that have really just been rubbing me the wrong way. I'm definitely never going to be purchasing from Nam Aesthetics, Buddha Pant, Pat McGrath, she's on the bubble. Like I'm chilling on Pat McGrath for the foreseeable future right now. I just, I just don't like some of these practices and this age of Insta scam truly is a dark one. Unfortunately, posting fake positive reviews, deleting or blocking negative reviews, or just generally being shitty to your customer base, none of these things are illegal. At the end of the day, what we are able to do is vote with our dollars and share information amongst ourselves as best we can. And even in just doing that, we often have more power than we think. If you've had any experience being insta scammed, please leave a comment and warn the people. I'm not sure how searchable YouTube comments are, but you might save someone from wasting their hard earned money on a brand that ain't worth the risk. Also, this is almost certainly going to be my last video of 2019 because I don't expect myself to be filming tomorrow on New Year's Eve. And even though I'm not doing a favorites video this year because y'all ain't gonna watch it, my real favorite of 2019 is all of you. This has been a surprising, scary, rewarding, Recording and just generally interesting year for me on YouTube. A lot of unexpected things happened 
And uh, as I said, it is scary, but I'm also really excited to continue seeing where we all go together in 2020. So with that, I will leave you guys here and wish you a very, very happy new year, a very, very happy new decade, in fact. But before I go, I wanna leave you with some important information that you're gonna wanna bring with you into the new year. And that is to never trust anyone with a Morphe code. Bye-bye. That's, that's a nappy head. And yes, I did hear Don Imus died. I got added so many times. Y'all are crazy. That's, that's a nappy head at all. Is there? I'm going to take that down. <laughs>